The title of my keynote speech is Our Tribal Languages Are Us and We Are Our Tribal Languages. It's an honor for me to be keynoting this first annual conference sponsored by AHEC. And I'd like to thank Gurgita Antoine and AHEC, Terry Billy, for granting me this honor. Talking and teaching the Cheyenne language are passions for me because I am so glad that the Cheyenne language is my first language. And I am so glad to be a Northern Cheyenne. I do have a doctorate in educational leadership, but my class seven certi certificate, which allows me to teach Cheyenne language supersedes the diploma from Boston University in importance for me. I want to talk to you about indigenous languages and I will be using the, the word indigenous in all my references to the people, the flora and fauna, and the languages which predate the colonization of what is now America. In the July 2012 issue of the National Geographic, in its article called Vanishing Voices, authored by Russ Meyer, it states that one language dies every 14 days. By the next century, nearly half of the roughly 7,000 languages spoken on Earth will likely disappear as communities abandon native languages in favor of English, Mandarin, or Spanish. And there are various numbers that are coming out. But since these were 2012, I, I'm, I'm using them as a reference point. So you may find other, in your researches, you may find other, other numbers. But we had to figure out at, at the tribal college how we were going to plan our language survival strategies. So this is, this is the, it's this National Geographic article is the one that I'm, basing my, uh, my statistics on. On the Cheyenne Reservation in September of 2015, we had, an ori we had, original, uh, had 566 original speakers of the Cheyenne language. That means they spoke only Northern Cheyenne, possibly until they went to school. Now, we have 344 people remaining. And the reduction has been through natural attrition, natural mortality, but the COVID panic really did a, a number on us. It took a lot of Cheyenne speakers, some of them whom were still quite young. If the current mortality rate persists, we predict that our language will be dead by 2036 as a spoken, as an oral language. It will persist as a written language forever and hopefully future Cheyenne will someday want to revive it as a spoken language if our language dies. At least they will have written resources to aid them. They will have help but I hope it never comes down to that. I hope it never comes down to revitalization. As an aside, I get a lot of um, requests to translate words from Cheyenne into English. For instance, I got a request for how do you say Niagara Falls in Cheyenne? So I told the requester that uh, I get in my pickup and I drive to Cheyenne, Wyoming, get out of my pickup and say Niagara Falls. Then I get back 
drive 300 miles back to the reservation with the satisfaction of knowing that I've said Niagara Falls and Cheyenne. That was supposed to be a joke. The next part I'm going to be saying in Cheyenne. This is a host, come on. They are in the most. They are man, they are man, Mr. Wood. We saw a message to Wood. Now, we saw a hook stand of it. The Dutta Cass, the Danica Scunia, now, hey, got Scunia. We saw Wood's to my Wood. We saw Wood's to my Wood. He no, it is no power, no, no, no. Become our work, stand the hill store. Pizarro, stand the hill. Tickle, tickle, who wired that? To say, what stand the that's what stand the that's. It is the one hot handle. It does come out what's done the heavy am, what's done the heaviest. To say, this are a hooks than the hills. It is half seven done now. It is our hooks that done the rain. It is the one hot handle. It does. To which I am what's done the heavy. Now, I take my issue, my say, for us. And here's enough so for you to know what the issue was not on me. And I will translate that. In many tribal cultures, it was said that if the boys were not initiated into manhood, if they were not shaped by the skills and love of elders, then they would destroy the culture. So the fires that burn innately inside youth are not intentionally and lovingly added to the hearts of community, they will burn down the structures of culture, just to feel the warmth. These words are from Michael Mead, and they are worth heeding. They were first written in 1993 and were recently written in the magazine Sun. And they are profound words. We are seeing our people warming themselves in the embers of our cultures and languages. And we will continue to see them do that unless we do something about it. And all of this warming is happening in mainstream America and on our reservations. To save our languages, we have to intentionally and lovingly add our youth to the warmth we are capable of so that they do not burn down our cultures. What does the death of a language mean? It means the loss of our cultural bearings and the age old customs they conveyed for, to us for eons of time. Marie Smith, the last fluent speaker of the EAC language in Southeast Alaska died in January of 19, January 19, 2007. I happened to meet her a couple of months before that. I was just fascinated by her. She was the last speaker of her language and she had no one to speak with who equaled her fluency. I don't want to ascribe more to this momentous encounter, which I consider a momentous encounter but I saw in her the loss of a whole universe of knowledge linguistically and culturally that, will she, that she will take with her to the next camp when she walks on from this world. She had gladly, boldly tried to perpetuate her people and her language. I hope that none of our languages ever have a last speaker. It is a heartbreaking, it is a heartbreaking, devastating experience, even seen from a distance. What does language vitalization mean? It means a lot of work. 
It is a monumental effort. It means dedicating their life to a lifelong effort. Languages that have been prolonged or revitalized after near extension have usually had dedicated proponents of their languages and cultures. The Wampanoag, and I hope I pronounced that right, the Wampanoag language was revitalized by the leadership of one woman, Jessie Little Doe Bird, a Mashpee Wampanoag Indian woman. Eliezer Ben Yehuda brought the Hebrew, Hebrew language back to everyday use after it had been dormant for 3,000 years. He dedicated his life to this revitalization. Are we willing to do what these two did? If we are, we must minimize tribal strife, learn to read and write our own languages. Oral fluency is good, but it is not enough in a revitalization effort. We must share record, we must share methods that work even if we don't speak the same languages. We must read about language revitalization and adapt our teaching to those methods that are successful. Minimize your possessiveness about your materials, share them. We indigenous people are all in this together. We can minimally depend on schools, churches, local, state, and federal governments. They have nearly succeeded in killing our languages our cultures, and thankfully the government is no longer killing the speakers of our languages and the practitioners of our cultural practices. That is a relief. Why should we save our languages? We should save them for ourselves. We should save them as individuals. Take me, for example, and here I'm going to be throw, throwing out some dirty linen, which turned out good. I am a recovering alcoholic and have been for the past 40 or so years. I have a good education, a very supportive wife, Janice, who happens to be a Vihaa, a white woman. All of these ingredients in my life contribute to the good life I live. I know my wife's going to say I'm an ingredient, but I would say to her, remember, I love you more than dry meat and fry bread. However, I really believe that knowing two languages, Cheyenne and English, play an important, a very important part in who I am. And I wish it had the same influence as in others. Knowing two languages and having a good vocabulary in both of them enable me to express and deal with any psychological or spiritual hurt I may encounter because I can express this hurt in two languages deeply and not just on the surface. And it helps me vent that way. I don't have to go out and self sedate. For the, furthermore, these languages contribute contribute in another way. Cheyenne enables me to take care of spiritual distress and English enables me to make a living in the white world. We should save our languages because they net our cultures together and keep our sovereignty intact. Eliezer Ben Yehuda realized that if Israelis were ever to have a country of their own, they would also have to have a language of their own because the language is a central component of sovereignty. It knits everything together, the language, the customs, the language, the land itself. So how do we save our languages? Let's use every method we have and use it at home, in school and non-school settings. I used to work in Alaska, visiting many villages throughout the length and breadth of that huge state. And I did that for almost 10 years. But there was no around, nobody around to speak language with. The nearest ones were probably 2,500 miles away. 
So I did self-emerge. I talked to myself out loud in Cheyenne. Talking to myself provided the most highly intelligent conversations I have ever had. And I also got many strange looks from people passing by. And I, but I withstood all of that. Since our languages are now being taught in school settings, we must adapt to the learning and teaching methodology schools require. Most mainstream educated teachers and administrators are not taught about indigenous language teaching efforts in their methodology classes in college teacher training programs. This situation often results in failure of the indigenous language teacher and for the superintendents, principals, and school board members. School board members are often not oriented to ind indigenous language teaching. So they become hostile to the program, even if they are from that language group. But we must persist. Language teaching and learning are often accomplished in a family. But because of previous language oppression policy, policies and practices, many of our people do not speak their indigenous languages. So there is no reinforcement for our children at home once they've learned something at the schools. How do we teach our languages? As far as I can tell, there are three kinds of curricula. Teach about the language, teach with the language and teach the language. And we must concentrate on teaching the language. We've done enough about languages. We must learn to teach the languages ourselves. Read about other language groups and how they have survived and revitalized their languages. Go to the archive of the Tribal College Journal and learn what other tribes are doing to save their languages. Read, for instance, their publication, Language Revitalization at Tribal Colleges and Universities, Overviews, Perspectives, and Profiles, 1993-2018. It has loaded with good positive publications from many of the people engaged in this practice. The other thing is to do is to coin new words to keep up with current and newly emerging social, technological, and cultural phenomena. The English language is very good at this. It just gobbles up other, the words from other languages and adapts them to use. For instance, a few years ago, whenever the word web, W-E-B, was spoken about, we all thought about spider's web. Now, it is almost synonymous with all the latest te technical, technological phenomena that are going on throughout the world. That's what I mean by being able to to grab other words and adapt them to use in your own language. And that's what we got to do. It's got to coin new words. If we don't, if our languages don't keep up with current phenomena, we are contributing to the, to the death of those languages. And let's quit talking about our languages. Let's talk, let's talk them everywhere. Talk. Let's talk them everywhere to anybody. If there's no one around to talk to, talk to the sagebrush, the willow, the pine tree, and even to fence posts. Give your youth names in your tribal language. You'd be surprised at their positive reactions. At the college here, we get names, we, add, we get requests for names of our people. Unfortunately, many of whom are, have died and they want it in the obituary. We got to keep up this practice. We're losing out on that. My name is Howling Bird in Cheyenne. Furthermore, let's quit blaming schools, government policies, 
government and church schools. We know they've done the traumatic damage to our people by depriving us of our languages and by suppressing our cultures. And that has had lasting effects. We can blame them and we can do that forever, but that's wasted energy. Blaming does not solve anything. We must refocus and maintain our languages because mainstream America is succeeding in doing away with our languages and doing away with us physically, culturally, and linguistically, if we don't do anything about it, about all this loss. We are in a dire situation. And finally, what will happen to us when nobody speaks our tribal languages anymore? The people who lost their tribal language will be struck mute in their own languages. Those who have lost their languages will still dress in their tribal dress and regalia. They will still sing their tribal songs, but they will have a hollow sound. They may even sing tribal lyrics, but they will not understand what they are singing. The woman will still ululate, the men will still war hoop, but the ululation and the war hopes will have minimal significance. Even though the metal art still sing songs with indigenous words, no one will be around to understand them. It's the same way with the owl, who will still hoot for bread late at night, but no one will understand the owl's request. And this is the, these are the words that we hear in Cheyenne being conveyed to us by the metal ark and the owl and by the other animals that we, we that are on our reservation. Those will be, they will not lose them, but the listeners will have lost something vital. There will also be no one to tell bedtime stories in the indigenous language. One of my, among my favorite memories is when the older people would say, Oliver's gonna be teaching and telling stories tonight. Grab a blanket and go over there and listen. And we would all troop over to Oliver's place. And we would listen and he would tell stories and he would say, say, ha, huh, every once in a while. And there, at first there would be a lot of people saying, Cheyenne, huh? And pretty soon the frequency of those words would start falling off. And pretty soon there would be nothing. Oliver had accomplished what he set out to do. He'd put us all faithfully to sleep. We know some of the language, some of the stories we never knew the ending of. And that's what kept us going back to listen to Oliver. Those things are now rapidly disappearing. They are being replaced by radio, television, our telephones. I suppose most of you who are muted and not on, not your pictures and on there are all staring at your telephones and not listening to me. Shame, shame, shame on you. They even do that in our tribal councils now. Let's, let's minimize the intrusion of that. When no one speaks our languages, the slow motion genocide of indigenous people on the, in this country, which began in 1492, will be nearly complete. Because all that will remain are the empty shells of a people who still look indigenous. If we don't do anything to save our languages, we will help to 
complete, we will have helped to complete the cycle of destruction of who we are that started in 1492 and intensified in the 1800s. We will have helped mainstream America destroy indigenous people on this continent unless we do something about it. And I hope conferences like this increase the number because we need to get together. We need to show that we are all together in this. We need to show people that we value our languages, that we value our cultures, that we value who we are as a people. I'm, what, I'm not particularly a, a traditional Native American. I haven't taken part in many of the ceremonies that are integral to who we are, but I respect them. I wish I had had the time when I was earlier in my life when I could have participated in these, but I did not. And I still feel a, a huge emptiness because I did not do that. I take comfort in knowing that I was doing something else, like going into the service, like becoming educated. And those were the prime times and I could have gone on fast, gone on these treks. And I do regret that. And I, I feel sort of an emptiness because of not being able to do that. So let's stop the cycle of destruction that is slowly succeeding unless we do something about this. Thank you for listening to me. And I hope you gain something out of this. I hope I tweet something that might that might help you in what you're doing. This is what I would rather be doing. My day job keeps interfering with what I really want to do. And that's to help save the language, to read and write the language. I learned how to read and write the language in, when I was in Alaska, because I would sometimes get bored with uh, speakers. So if I see any of you reading and or see, see any of you guys scribbling, I will know, I will know that I have bored you. I appreciate this opportunity to be able to speak to everybody. It's not, it's not the most comfortable way. I like interacting with people that I talk to. And it, this is difficult for me to do. I, I can't tell you how much uh, this is really, this is really helpful for me to be able to coalesce some of the thoughts that I'm still that I still have and that still drive me. And I hope that I've conveyed some of that, some of that to you people. The other thing I would, the last thing I would like to say is if you don't speak your language, that's good. Because because there were many forces, boarding schools, language oppression, cultural oppression policies instituted by, by the government. If you don't speak your language, languages, that's, there's a, there are a whole lot of reasons for that. But don't be comfortable in that. Learn about your languages. Then it becomes your fault if you don't try to do that. If you don't try to learn your language, then it becomes your fault. Because if you die, then all the forces will die with you and nobody will want, nobody will, and everybody will follow your example then. So please don't do that. Thank you very much for listening to me. 